What's up guys, this is Casey bringing you another tutorial for today. You'll realize that I'm not in Blender, I'm in GIMP. This is a free image editing program, software, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I use this over Photoshop because, well, one, Photoshop is very expensive, and two, this is just basically what I have uh, most of my experience in. So, you can always go to Google or whatever your favorite search engine is and just look up GIMP. This is how you spell it usually in capitals. Um, you can download this, it's completely free. Or you can try and use Photoshop to do the same thing. Um, I know a lot of people will argue that they're not the same. And they're, they're not, but um, you can pretty much transfer a lot of this knowledge to Photoshop if you know Photoshop at all. Uh, so today I just wanted to show you a few things that can help in Blender uh, using GIMP. Uh, it's something that people have been asking for actually. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to make a uh, quick displacement map. Uh, I'm using this image here. This is called Metal Painted uh, 0048 underscore 1 underscore S. Uh, I got this image from cgtextures.com. It's free, free downloads. Uh, if you work in CG or do CG as a hobby, you need to know that site because it's incredibly useful. Um, this is the image that I've used for a couple of my tutorials now. Uh, and I've, up until now, I have had this on my website um, in the displacement forum so that you guys can use it. But now I'm going to show you how to make it. So go to cgtextures.com, search for Metal Painted 0048. This should be the one that pops up download it and open it up in GIMP or just watch along, follow along and uh, you can apply your skills later. This will work on pretty much any image that you want to do. So the reason I use this for displacement is because I like a lot of the scratches. Um, let me zoom in a little bit. Sorry if it's a little slow guys, my computer's not great. Uh, so it has a lot of these scratches. Some of them are dark, some of them are light, some of them are deep and some of them are not. Um, I wanted to use this as a displacement map for a lot of my projects because it, it actually turns out really nice. So I just have this loaded up. I haven't done anything special to it so far. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here to my colors tab and I'm going to go right down here to desaturate. And this is just going to turn it into a black and white image. Now you can play with these little luminosity settings, uh, lightness, average, luminosity, some of them will give you better results. I actually think I like this luminosity one because it's, it looks like it made the background a little darker with the scratches a little lighter. So I'm going to click on that one. And now we have our black and white image. So now that we have that, we need to basically just get rid of the rest of the stuff and just leave the scratches. And actually, in order to do that, maybe invert. Let's invert it. There we go. So I went to colors and invert, and now the scratches are black, and the rest of it is lighter. So that's kind of what I'm looking for. I want the scratches to be black and the rest of it to be white. Um, you don't necessarily have to do it that way. It just means that when you're in Blender and you're using displacement, you might have to reverse the displacement in Blender because it'll work where the black, the black lines are what's going to be indented, and the white parts are not. So that's the reasoning behind that. Uh, so the next thing I want to do is I want to go to Colors, Levels, and this is going to get us pure black and white image. So you can see that there's this weird hump right here, and that's basically showing you the amount of black and white in this picture. So we're just going to move our arrows around until we get pretty much the effects that we want. So as I move the right arrow, this white arrow, you can see that the white gets whiter, the lighter colors get lighter. And as I move the black in, the black colors get blacker. That's pretty much how this works. So I'm going to move this middle one, that's my grays, towards the black. Maybe I'll play too much black. Get rid of a lot, of, a lot more of them. Move my white color in a little bit more. And maybe my black in just a little bit. Maybe my gray and yeah, my black. Let's move it right in, right about there. Well, maybe just a little bit more. Okay. Maybe a little bit less. 
right there. So that's that's it. Um, I can just hit OK, and that would make a perfectly good displacement map. Has uh, tons of scratches. It would look perfect for everything that I want to use it for. I could just wrap this around an image, put it as a displacement, and we're good to go. Um, however, you can see that in adjusting the cover color levels, that it's become very pixelated. Um, so one thing you might want to do, you don't always have to do this, but you can just go to blur, Gaussian blur, and let's just blur it by like, I don't know, two? Two might work. Nope, two is too much. Let me go back, filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and let's just do one. One was a little better. It just helps to like soften the edges a little bit. Um, Blender is not going to pick up on that too much, but it, it will it will help a little bit. Uh, so that's it. That's the displacement map. That's how you make them. You can do that with pretty much any image that you want. You can make scratches. You can make dirt, sand, water, anything that you want. You can make a displacement map just like that. Um, however, you have to know that uh, the picture that we used originally is not tileable. That means that if you have to use multiple instances of the picture to wrap a model, so if you have like, uh, if, if you have to do two pictures side by side or four pictures in a square, um, it's it's not going to tile correctly. It's not going to line up. So if you have multiple instances of the picture on your model, there's going to be seams. Uh, so just remember that when you're looking for pictures to actually make a displacement map for. Uh, other than that, that's it. We're done with displacements. So, guy out there that asked me for a tutorial on how to do this, it was super easy, right? <laughs> okay, so anyways, um, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to make a brush. So, let me just go to new. Uh, I want to make it square. Let's do maybe like a 400 by 400. I don't know why I'm using it. I should just do this. 400, 400. There we go. And I guess I can close that. Okay, so I just have a white background. And you can search on Google or whatever your search engine is and find brushes for GIMP. And you can use Photoshop brushes in GIMP too. They work one and the same. Um, if you find one that you really like, like say, let me find one here. <laughs> I don't know what this one looks like. Okay, so I'm just going to increase the brush size to something like, is 200 going to be too big? Too small? Too small. Let's make it, oops, not 4,000, 400. There we go, that's the full size of my image right there, 400. And I'm using black. So now, actually, should I use black? Maybe I should use white. I don't remember. I don't know. Let me. I'm just going to click on it. That's basically what it looks like. That's one of the brushes. It's just a grunge brush. Actually, you know what? I don't like that brush. Let's use something else. Uh, da, 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 da. I thought I had some scratchy brushes on here. If not. Mm -hmm. Something like this. What's this look like? Let's go. Alright, that's not too bad. Let's do that. Okay. So uh, basically now I have that. Actually, before I do that, I'm hitting Control-Z and that's just undoing my last thing to get rid of it. Um, since it is a white background, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually add a new layer. And that layer automatically becomes transparent. So I'm going to add the brush onto that transparent layer. Like that. And then I can just click the little eyeball that hides my background. It gives me just the black and a transparent background. And that's that's it. That's how you make a brush. Um, if you wanted to, you could make your own custom brushes instead of just looking up get brushes like I usually do. And let me see if I can find something here. I'll grab something like that. Let me lower this down. Whoa! Not go up. Go down. Let's go like 20. It's 20. Way too small. Okay, let's do 100 much better. So I could go through and I could like, I don't know, paint a little bit on here. Like a couple scratches. Like this. Do, do, 
do that. And the one thing that you want to make sure that you do with these brushes is you really don't want them to, um, you don't want them to reach the edges of the image. You want the, you want the image to be seamless when you're making a brush. So if you do something like this, if you get it off the side, best thing you can do is really just grab your eraser. And I'm going to switch to just a regular fuzzy brush. And I'm just going to brush around the edges like this. Try to make it almost circular a little bit. I'm just getting rid of some of these, some of the edges here. So now this is tileable. You won't see uh, any seams or anything like that. There won't be any artifacts. Um, but that's basically just a custom brush. You could go through this and have a fun time doing it. I have never made a custom brush myself like this. I just use ones that are pre-made because it's easy. So I'm going to go back to this one. I like this one, so uh, let's go ahead and save it. Well, uh, in the new version of GIMP, now I don't know how new it is, but uh, it's fairly new for me anyways. You can't just click Save As, because that's going to save it as a GIMP file. We want to export it, so I'm going to click Export To. And I'm going to go Pictures, and I'm going to name it as... What the heck? Test in Rush. And now it, you have to add the file extension. So for these images, since we want the transparent background, we have to do PNG. So PNG and save. And this is going to bring up like the quality level. For PNG, I never mess with it. So I'm just going to click OK, save it. And now we're going to go to Blender. And let's test it out. <clears throat> All right, so here we are in Blender. So if you have watched my hand painted tutorial, then you'll know pretty much how to do this already on how to paint. So let's go to what am I looking for? Boy, feels like it's been a while since I've been in here. Uh, da, 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 da. we need a new material on here. Okay, no. took me a minute to get my bearings. Okay, so we have our new material, and I'm going to go to my compositor, to my note editor. If I'm moving too fast for you guys, uh, check out my channel. There's a hand-painted um, material tutorial that goes really in-depth on this stuff. So don't, don't feel bad if I'm going too fast. Okay, so I'm going to go texture, image texture, plop it right in here, plop it like that. Can I go new? And let's change the color to white so I don't have to mess with it. Okay, and pop open that. And do, do, do. should be good to go on that. Okay, so now we just go to texture pane. Why does it say missing data? Oh, yeah, because it's not unwrapped. Object mode, tab, U, uh, let's smart UV, project it, I guess. Okay. Now we should be able to texture paint. Um, okay, so now I'm going to open up my new brush. So let's go texture, new, go to my texture tab, and brush texture. Image or movie is what I'm looking for, and I'm going to open, and let's go. What's it in? Oh man, it's in my pictures. Ah oh, no. There we go. That's a good brush. There we go. Okay. And then we want black. And we want random. Oops, not 3D, random. And there's our brush. Ta da! And we can just use that to paint all over our 3D surface. And that's pretty much how you make your own custom brushes. Um, there are a couple of forums out there that have links to very specific Blender brushes. Um, I have one of those packs downloaded that I use occasionally. Um, it's, it's a little easier than doing it this way. 
However, this gives you more freedom. It gives you a little bit more knowledge of what you're doing. And all in all, it's really a nice tool to have in your in your Blender tool belt to know that you can do something like this. And we'll do something like that. I don't know. <laughs> okay, so um, that's I mean that's pretty much it for that. Let me go ahead and close that out. Yes, I really want to quit. Okay. So now we're back again. And that's pretty much how you make a brush. Super easy. You can make multiple layers and layer on different brushes, different techniques. Um, pretty much anything you want to do. And uh, I guess that's it. Um, for a GIMP tutorial, that's pretty, pretty simple, right? That's uh, the basics. That's really the basics of what I use GIMP for when I'm in Blender. So hopefully you guys learned a little something, and thank you guys for watching.